everybody, welcome to the Projector Project. And this time we're going to go a different direction. We're going to build a Gagoose Roller. Now the Gagoose Roller is a 35mm all the way down to 8mm, everything in between, film scanner. It'll take film, regular film, motion picture film, and turn it into digital video. Now to start the project, I decided to go with the circuit board. The circuit board is a single circuit board that attaches to a Raspberry Pi. Now, this, this is the empty circuit board and we're going to turn it into one of these. So we're going to start by going through all the steps it takes to put this board together and, all, and everything you've got to do. So sit back and enjoy and we'll go through the building of the Gagoose Roller control board. And this is what the control board looks like when it's unpopulated. That means it doesn't have anything on it. Both sides. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into this. So that's going to be our control board when we're done. So, just uh, we'll show you what we got to do in the order we have to do it in. That's the big important thing: the order you got to do it in. So the general rule of building a PCB is to do your smallest components first. So in this case, we're going to do resistors first because they're very, very small. They sit close to the board. So we're going to be doing the 10K resistors right here. So what you do is you just insert the parts. And whatever way you put, them in, put the first one in, you follow that same example for the rest of them because you want to make your board look nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that component in there like that. And I'm going to fold the leads over this way. Um, let me see if I can show that up close. You can see that, that, that leads, the leads are folded over. And what we're going to do is we're going to now solder that into place. We're going to fold up the lead of the so side we're going to start with and we're going to take our solder and we're going to lay it next to the point we're going to solder. And then we apply heat to the joint. And now that lead is soldered in. I've soldered the second lead as well, and now you can see what it looks like when one is plugged in place. We'll flip the board over, and you can see how it looks on the other side. And here you can see we've got all the resistors put on. So we're ready to go to the next step, which I'm going to start with these little chips down here, right down here. Before I do the, the little chips, I'm going to take on cut off all the leads in the back of these resistors because these get way in the way. So we can get rid of them now. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we get as close as we can without tearing up the solder. And we just get our, our little, uh, these to be called nippy cutters. I think they call them angle pliers or something like that now. Get them in there and just start cutting off all the leads. And you can see that we'll just get through all those and it'll be a lot easier to work on the board after this. So now if you look at this chip, you'll see there's a little circle in the upper left corner of the way it's sitting. And if you look at the top of the diagram on the board, you'll see that there's a little circle there as well. The idea is to line those two up. And the if you do it that way, then the chip will be in the right spot and going the right direction. This is very, very important. So we're gonna put the chip into the slot. And we'll make sure we get all the legs through the holes. And you also want to make sure it fits flushly. Now this chip is in there pretty good and it's pretty tight so we don't have to use anything to hold it in place but we'll show you how we do things, other things that require it to be held in place. But this chip holds itself really well in spot. So now all you gotta do is go to the other side and side of the four on each side contacts, the eight contacts that are on the back. And just repeat it for the other chip that's just the same chip exactly. So that's all you gotta do. And we'll have that guy done. So next on our list is this logic level converter, digital level converter. And um, you look at this thing and you're saying to yourself, well, how do we attach that thing? Well, we do it with these pins. Now, when I bought the logical converter, um, it didn't come with these pins, so um, I'll include a link 
to uh, how to what pins I'm using. You can use any ones you want, but uh, this is the ones I use, and they, they're going to work fine. Um, but yeah, so what you do is you put these little pins onto the board, and you stand them up like little stilts, and then you put the board on top of the stilts. So it's really easy to do, but I'm going to show you a couple of tricks about this because this is this is a little tricky to do. And um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to break this off, and so it needs to have six pins from one end to the other. And the way you do that is these are just breakaway. So you find you count to six: one, two, three, four, five, six, and you put your pliers right there on top of the on top of the points of the six point, and you get your next set of pliers and you go on the other side of it and you just twist and they'll break off right at the point where those two pliers are at. Don't try this any other way, it doesn't work any other way. You'll get the wrong number of pins and you'll be figuring out how to deal with that. So that's how you do it. You do six of them and then do the same thing for the other side. Okay, so when you're inserting the pins into the into the board, you want the there's a tall end and a sh uh, a tall end and a a short end. So there's your uh, tall end and your short end. I don't know if well it's going to show, but there's a smaller end and a deeper end. The bigger end goes into the board. The taller end sits on top. So we're going to put those pins right into the board, just like that. And now they're in there right where they're at. Now, what you're going to do is, this is really the tricky part, this is the part that I learned the hard way on. You got to piece, put a piece of tape across this and hold it down and you're only going to do one pin on the back. Just one on one of the ends. Don't do anything in the middle. Just one on one of the ends. And we'll come back after that part's done. And I'll show you that process. So what I've done is I put a piece of tape over top of the pin and I put the pin through and then on the back, um, I've tried to keep it as straight as I could up and down. That's real essential, but I'll show you why. You want to only do one pin. You'll see in just a second. So as much as I tried to keep those pins straight up and down, they aren't. And I really tried hard to get them so they were straight up and down using the tape to hold them in place when I soldered them on the back. But it doesn't match up. And the bad thing is if you had done all these pins, You'd be stuck trying to figure out how to get this thing on there if you'd done all the pins. Luckily, all you gotta do now is to um, heat up the solder on both of those pins and work this board onto the onto the pins and then go back and solder all of them. You can even take you should take the board off before you do that though, before you do the back of the board. All the pins on the back of the board. But that's what you do. You just heat up the solder on the back and then put it put it back in place and you'll be able to get the board back on. And also, it's marked. There's uh, little markings on it that tell you what the pins are. LV1 is one of the ones at the top, and uh, you match up the numbers on this on the board. You're, you're probably going to need magnifying glass or or have really good young eyes. Um, but uh, as old guys, we just wear the goggles and see see down in there or magnifying glass. That's how you do it. You just gotta have to adjust this and get it to get it to go on. It'll be real easy. I'll show you when we when I get done doing that solder. Okay, so using that method, um, I'm just doing, I'll turn it over, you can see, I just have two pins on it right now, and now when we go to put this little, this, uh, little board chip on it, I'm not sure if it's upside down or right side up, but it actually it's upside down, but it fits right on, and it goes on easily, so we, now we can just solder it all the way in. That's how you do them. And there's multiple ones you have to do like this. You got to do all these chips over here, and all these, these are all little circuits, mini circuits. So you're going to do all this. This is the Arduino over here. So we're going to be doing all the same exact way. We're going to put the stilts on and build the board. So go back when all that's done because I don't see any sense in going through it again. So here we go. So we put all the integrated circuits in place. So these are all here. This is the Arduino and then the uh, this one down here. Um, that's all been done. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the um, the little, little tiny sockets down here, and this one on the end, and the uh, power. And there's the sockets going on this side um, for the cable connectors. And then uh, we'll be doing the um, center one here, the uh, center connector, uh, which is what attaches to the uh, Raspberry Pi. 
and then there's three um, these three transistors along here the tip 120s they're going to go in last and um, that's what we're going to be doing so when we get to the next phase I'll show you where we're at after we get the connectors in place also want to show that these um, integrated circuits sit up on top of these like little stilts so you have to solder them on both sides. You got to solder the bottoms of them. And you put the long sockets on, like we showed earlier, and then you should you attach the the higher ones up on the top. So that's how you do those integrated circuits that are up on these little stilts. First, I put in the six cable connectors. Then I put in the power connector and the hole detector connector. After soldering in the Raspberry Pi connector, I cut off all the leads, and then I put in the transistors. I finished it up by putting heat sinks on the three stepper controllers. As you can see, we built a second board, looks just like the first.